your dinner is served. I paid £46 for an Xbox One S off eBay and I have absolutely no idea what's wrong with it. All the listing said was that it was faulty, sold for spares and repairs. So we're going to try and fix it. Hopefully it's going to be something that we can actually fix because there's a big pile of consoles behind me and a lot of them are unfixed right now. So hopefully we're going to be able to get this fixed. One thing I will say before I get into this is yes, I know I still haven't got to the mess behind me. And uh, yeah, I've been ill recently, which is why my voice is still a little bit raspy. After a live stream last week, I lost my voice and I pretty much couldn't talk all week. And I'm still struggling a little bit, but I've got to get some content out there for you guys. So talking of content, make sure you get subscribed because I've got some really cool stuff coming up, including a 1990s Mickey Mouse and a virtual reality from the 90s as well. So make sure you get subscribed for that. Um, while you're there, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and make me look a little bit more popular. So with that being said, let's get into this one. So if we take a look at the listing here, we can see Xbox One S console, 40 for spares of repairs, 36 pound plus 10 pound postage. And this took quite a while to arrive, which was pretty annoying. But one thing that was interesting about this is that there's a two terabyte box here. I seriously doubt it's gonna be a two terabyte console but we'll find out but if we take a look at the listing description it just says xbox one s console 40 for spares and repairs before we get into this repair i do just want to thank pcbway for sponsoring today's video pcbway are the industry leader in custom pcb printing personally i've had projects printed by pcbway and i was genuinely impressed with the quality of the products i received the order was processed in less than 24 hours and it was at my door within a week the order process, even for myself as a complete and utter noob, was super simple to do. Just fill out the quick start wizard, upload the Germa files, and they take care of the rest. PCBWay also offer custom CNC machine parts, as well as both 3D printing and injection moulding services, and right now they're even offering 10% off your first project. If you need inspiration, they've even got a shared project section where you can see what other people are creating. You can download their project files or simply add your own twist and create something completely new. So a massive thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to it. So yeah, I have absolutely no idea what could be wrong with this. So let's plug it in first of all and just see if it turns on. We've got a fair bit of what looks to be smoke damage on here. It's not really coming across, well, there it is. So he's coming across on camera now. But fair bit of smoke damage, I'm probably gonna have to change this case, to be honest. Oh, oh, oh he's beep on beep off, no. All right, beep on beep off. That means that when we try to turn it on, it just instantly turns back off. Let's get it apart, shall we? So, I'm gonna get the gloves on because this definitely looks like he's got some smoke damage and god knows what else so it's going to be interesting to see what it looks like inside i wasn't happy with how long it took to come to be honest it took three days just for the set of deposit which was pretty ridiculous but hopefully we can get it fixed at least so this has definitely been messed with before as well a lot of people say i make them nervous while i'm drinking coffee around the uh <clears throat> yeah there goes the throat again a lot of people say that oh, i make them nervous drinking coffee around consoles nah it's fine by the way i chip my cup that sucks <sighs> gotta love a bit of coffee at 1.52 a.m in the morning 1.52 a.m in the morning a.m is morning Hmm. Anyway. By the way, that is not warped. That's just the way the camera makes it look. Oh, there we go. Okay. And we have some screws missing. But someone's definitely been in here at some point. Now, whether that's for an attempted repair, I don't know. I sure as hell hope someone hasn't just thrown something together because I see that all too often on eBay, to be honest. So I will say one thing, 
eBay is a risk. Buying on eBay is a risk. I do it because I like to make content. So sometimes I'll pay a little bit more than what I should do based on face value. But you should always buy something and pay face value for it. Never pay too much. Don't do what I do. I do this for content related purposes. And this probably wouldn't have been worth that if I'd have actually bought it on face value. To be honest, because what I should be doing here is asking the set of questions and then taking them into account when buying. But I didn't, I just bought it. I thought it'd make an interesting video, so don't what don't do what I do. Alright, what are we gonna get in here? Uh, actually let's inspect these ports. That is absolutely disgusting. Don't know how that could get to that state. Uh, nope, it is not a two terabyte drive. It is a one terabyte though, which is sort of good, I guess. So I'm going to try a non good power supply in this before I go any further. So I've got one of my own power supplies here. Let's try a power supply first. Fan spin? Nope. No, okay, so it's very rarely the power supply when we get a beep on beep off issue. It can be down to one of the capacitors inside the power supply, but again, that's not very often, to be honest. So, the power supply is not the main issue. Whether the power supply is good is a different question, but it's not the main issue. So, it's not going to be a 12 volt short. So a 12 volt short would typically cause it to not turn on at all. So I'm not expecting there to be any kind of short on the 12 volt rail and I am expecting the 12 volt rail to be present as well when we are in standby because it's attempting to turn on. It needs 12 volt there, it's a master power rail. Everything is generated from that 12 volt line. We can obviously confirm that the 12 volt is present even though I know it's going to be. So what we can do is we can test this test point here just near to the power supply and we can test that in voltage mode and that will give us a reading and maybe not because it's not plugged in oh dear well it is 2.04am in the morning what the What on earth happened there? Was that because I was shorting something out? That was a little bit odd, to say the least. Well, it's not going to turn on, that's for sure. Anyway, let's test this 12 volt rail. Just so I can show you that it's present and stable. Yep. So the 12 volt rail is present and stable. So that's fine. So let's just do a few tests. So what we can do is we can check some of the test points and they're indicated by some numbers and letters. So for example, the 1.1 volt rail is 1P1STBY and that stands for the 1.1 volt rail while the console is in standby, which is when it's in an idle state like this. So. We want to test and see if we get 1.1 volts while we're in standby, which we should. And we do 1.136, which is perfectly normal. The 3.3 volt rail, I'm expecting to be there because the 3.3 volt rail is required for the pebble button and the eject button. So if we test that there, we get 3.283 which is fine a little bit of voltage drop across the leads which yeah it's within tolerance the 1.8 volt is 1p8 stby and that is present okay and then what we can do as well is we can test the well we can test the 5 volts so 5 volt is here uh, 5.04 uh, well they're about yeah so that is present and correct and what we can also do is we can test the voltage rails while it's turned on. So if I give this somewhere to permanently ground itself to, 
and yep we get voltage so that means we've got ground so what we can also do is we can test some of the voltage rails that are meant to turn on as the console turns on so for example we can test the 1.1 volt rail that comes from the safe bridge and it comes from the safe bridge when the console is turned on so if i test this test point now we get nothing and then we do see attempt to give us a reading but it just doesn't give us a proper reading because it's not turning on for long enough so we've got sb1p8 and we do get voltage there we've got a 3.3 volt rail here which is unmarked yeah that's fine uh i'm not sure on any other test points 12 volts there one thing i've found before is sometimes we can have a short around here so around the usbs 5 volts on both sides of that fuse that's fine 5 volts up there 1.1 volts on the retimer so that's the HDMI IC which is fine interesting I don't think 0.6 volts is normal and oh here we are look I've just saw some corrosion as I've started to look around here this has got some liquid damage okay well it's pointless doing any more tests because I now know that we've got some liquid damage around the main power phases. I didn't notice that when I first looked at the board, but then again, I didn't look in that corner. Or not properly anyway. Alright, that just shows that you should be looking, I suppose. Okay, let's get the heatsink off. But first, coffee break. Whoa, go and watch the video. I'm drinking my coffee. Oh shit. I'm the host. Damn, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. My bad. Alright. <laughs> sorry about that. Little bit of uh little bit of confusion there. I'm getting old. I'm sure you can forgive me. Nope. Okay, let's pop this under the microscope. Right, as you can see, it's pretty rough around here. So we've got some, well, that's just dust, but, or at least I hope it's dust. Looks a bit like bum fluff. But uh, we've got some corrosion around here and some very clear damage. If I flick these caps here, they will likely just ping off. Nope. Oh, well, maybe not. Well, maybe not. But anyway, either way, yeah. Let's pretend I didn't say that then. Most of the time, they ping off. Not gonna happen. No, not gonna happen. <laughs> so that's probably going to cause unstable voltage because these are all very important components. They're all very important capacitors and things like that because they basically stabilise the power for the 12 volt rail. So they are very important. But let's just have a little hunt around. So we know we've got some damage here. But let's just have a little hunt around and see if we've got any more. Yep. So we've got a chip here called NCP4205. This is one of the main power management ICs. And this distributes power to pretty much everywhere. So we've got some damage there. A little bit of damage around here. Don't think the TPS51916 is damaged. I think that's just dust. So we need to hunt everywhere now and just see what we can find. If we find any corrosion, then we're going to have to tackle it. So I'll hunt around the ram here. I'll fast forward through this until I either find something or don't find anything else. Alright, I'm not finding much else. So let's tackle this area here first. I think this is just going to be pretty much a full area rebuild if i'm being honest so basically what i mean by that is apart from these 
aluminium capacitors here. All of this here, I think I'm just going to knock it all off. I think I'm just going to take it all off, clean it all up, wick away all of the pads so it's nice and clean, and then just rebuild it. So I'll take it down the board and just rebuild it. I think that's probably my best option. So I'll just add a little bit of flux there, and I'm probably going to fast forward through a lot of this because it's going to be time consuming rebuilding all of this circuit. But essentially what I'm going to be doing here is just taking my hot air and desoldering these components and basically just getting it ready for some new components to go on. So I've got my hot air at 480 degrees Celsius. It is a high temperature area. So I'll get a little bit of heat in the board and then I'll start to work on it. So what I'll do now, before I go any further, I'm going to clean it up. So I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush. I'm just going to give it a scrub. So that should do for now. So then what I'll do is add some more flux. I'm going to add some leaded solder to this area. And then I'm going to wick it all away. So I'll just add a nice blob to my iron. And even though there is nothing connected to these pads here, I'm still going to wick it away and clean it up. Because I don't want to leave corrosion on the boards. I don't want to leave any kind of gunk there. That's going to cause problems in the future. I actually had to replace a console today that I sold on eBay. Because it worked for about an hour and then just died. So I need to look at that at some point. Alright, so I've replaced all of the solder there. And then even though that looks clean, there could still be some corrosion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wick it all away and then put fresh solder down. And that way then I'll know for a fact that there's not going to be any corrosion around. Alright, that'll do it. That's perfectly fine. Okay, that's good enough for now. So let's just replace that solder now. So this might seem a little bit counterproductive by wicking the solder away, but I did want to make sure that the pads were clean, just so as it's not going to come back to bite me in the butt at a later stage. And these two pads here being bridged is perfectly fine. It's one big ground plane. So it doesn't matter that the solder mask has been exposed there. So what I'm going to do now is grab a donor board that I can just take components from. Rather than looking up values. I just lost that big cap that I've just put on there, that's annoying. This is a really awkward area. Alright, Flux will pull that in a minute, don't worry about that. There we go. Want to see something magic?
Well, wasn't much magic going on there. Never mind. And let's just clean up this area. So let's just get some IPA on it. And let's figure out what we actually need to change because I don't really fancy rebuilding this entire circuit, to be honest. Okay, so I'm gonna change the power management IC. And I think I'll replace these components around here. Um, yeah, they don't look great either, to be honest. I think that's good. I think, I think that's going to be pretty much it for there. Let's start rebuilding this then. So I don't think I need to replace the solder by wicking it away on this one. This one's not as bad. I will still tin all of the test points and stuff, but I don't think I need to go as far as I did on the other part. That area looks great now. Let me just clean up this MOSFET because they are awkward. Get rid of that solar squeezage. So, like I said, this is the NCP4205 and it is a power management IC by On Semiconductor. You can get it from AliExpress. I'm going to take mine from a donor board though. And actually, not yet I'm not, because as I've just turned my hot air on, I've realised that we might have some damaged traces around that PMIC. So I'll just take the multimeter in continuity mode and I'm going to test for continuity from here to there we have continuity how about from here no continuity so that line is broken and i can actually see it there so that line is broken so we're going to have to do a trace repair there 
so the best option here when you're dealing with this where you've got a damage trace what i'm going to try and do i'm going to try and just bridge it so it's basically we just use a little bit of solder just to form a junction between the broken parts but if that doesn't work then i'm going to have to lift up the trace that's already there Nah, it's gone. All right, well that sucks. I mean, this one here is gone for definite. I can see that that one's gone. So there's no avoiding a trace repair here. I need to lift up this trace. Which is a lot more difficult than it may seem. <laughs> I can't actually get it to lift up. I don't want to damage the board, but then at the same time, I really need to get that trace out so as I can drop a jumper wire there to replace it. Because I need the I need the chip to be sitting flat. There we go. That got it. So you can see what I've done here. I've basically just removed that trace completely. And then what I can do is I can use a little bit of jumper wire and reform the pad using just a little bit of wire. So what I'm gonna do, I don't wanna get that close to the chip. So I'm actually gonna come from the test point here. But first of all, I do just need to tin the jumper wire because this has got an enamel coating on it. So I'll just scrape it with my soldering iron. I really think that's breaking on that other trace. I don't know if it's just me being over cautious here. It really is breaking, isn't it? Like, I think that's broken. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that one's going to be done as well. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of thought it was. It was definitely weak. I could see it. I thought it was light. But I, or rather, lack of light. But I could kind of see it, that it was breaking away. And I guess it's just wishful thinking that you don't have to restore two. There we go. So yeah, I've just removed both of those. I kind of knew it was going to happen, to be honest. So let's just expose this enamel wire. This is 0.1 millimeter. Okay. So there's a jumper wire. move a bit of that flux out of the way and then I'm just going to position this and make sure I've got it in position properly there we go Break that away. And then I'm going to cut it at this end as well. So as it's not too long. I'll get that roughly back in line there. And then do the same with the other trace. So I'll solder that to the resistor because that's where it runs to. Trim that away. 
Now then what I need to do is just manipulate these so as they're sitting nice and flat on the board. And also in the right place as well. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is add a little bit of what's called conformal coating or solder mask. And what that's for is basically protecting the jumper wires. So we want to basically recoat the jumper wires, but at the same time we also want to stop them coming off when we use hot air and stop them from shorting out on anything else as well. So we'll just add some conformal coating here. And I know I call it conformal coating. The the actual name for it is solder mask. But I'll just call it conformal coating because I just find it easier. <laughs> so basically what this is is a glue for PCBs. And it cures using UV light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my UV light and I'm going to basically expose it to UV and that should harden the solar mask. Alright, so that's gone somewhat hard. So what I'll do now is just use a little bit of warm air along with the UV light. And as you can see now, if I poke and flood it, it's solid. And those jumper wires are going nowhere. So I've got myself a donor chip. Let's just reach in the rest of these pads because we have been messing around with it. There we go. And I'm going to take my cheek and roughly align it. And I'm going to predict that when I push down on this chip, we're going to get the solder squeeze out through the two places I don't want it to squeeze out the jumper wires. I'm going to press down on the chip. And uh, yeah, right by the jumper wires. That's not completely straight, I do need to sort that out. Let me just get rid of this excess solder though, otherwise it's just going to suck straight back up. And now I can reflow it into place. Don't know if that's lined up, let's just clean it up and find out. You could do with coming over to the right slightly. That said, that side is connected. And slightly down, I think. So down this way slightly. And to the right, okay. No, there is no way that's level. Let's give that a whirl. So I'm going to tin it quickly. I'll just try and sort out these pads. Alright, so now for the awkward pads. And as you can see, we've also got a bridge there as well. The bridge is fine. That will clear up in a second. Just need to get in with the iron. There we go.
Okay, let's inspect that. That side is close enough. Solar joints are good as well. That's good enough. This side's the moment of truth. Oh yeah, we've got the contact. Look at that. That's got better contacts than Simon Cowell. And that's got better joints than Bob Marley. <laughs> Buffalo Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> Dreadlock Fluxer <laughs> That's beautiful I'm happy with that Alright, just need to replace these components that I took off So there's a couple of components I took off I don't want to use hot air for too long there now just given how much rework has been done. So that was a little bit of a task to say the least, but hopefully we've got everything. Hopefully I haven't missed anything. I don't think I have. There's that missing cap. The one that pings off. So I'll just scrub this with some isopropyl alcohol now. And it's not going to work with that thermal paste on. There we go. And it's only going to work with the best damn thermal pasta that money can buy. And this one's all mine. We're going to put an S for success. Okay? S for success. And then look like a fool when it don't work. But I think this is probably all I can do to this. So if it doesn't work now, then... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Alright. Reset the power supply. I'll keep it out of the case. Alright, moment of truth. Let's get reaction cam on. There we go. Is it going to work? What do you think? Bit of good look coffee. What do you think? Is it going to work? Yes. That's fantastic. I don't know. Ah, oh, there it is. Is it going to display? Yes. It works. It's the thermal pasta. It has to be the thermal pasta. All right, did we get a free disc? <laughs> Far Cry 5. Nice. That's awesome. We even get a free disc. All right, let me sync a controller up. That's fantastic. It's rare to get a free disc from eBay. 
Ow! Ow! I caught my finger on the fan. I'm not a fan. And uh, controller synced. Come on. There we go. 4K display. That's what I'm talking about. And, oh. <laughs> Far Cry 5 is worth about £6 on its own, so that's a win, man. That's a win. I'll never use it, but I can use it as a test game, I suppose. Anyway, this is working, and it's absolutely fantastic. I am super, super happy. Uh, didn't have high hopes for this one. But, yeah, I am going to change the case on it. I don't have one to hand right now, but I don't really think I'll be using that case. So, yeah, I am going to change the case on it, but... Uh, oh, there we go. Far Cry 5. Yeah. So, I am going to change the case on it, but I don't have one to hand right now. I need to sort one out. I do have some cases. I just don't have any up here in the workshop. So, I will change that. Um, and then, obviously, I can resell this and... Yeah, make a little bit of profit on it. Happy days. I'm super, super happy. Glad that it worked. Uh, so, yeah. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. I always do my best to read and reply to all of them. And if you do want to organise a repair, then you can get in touch using the website in the video description. Consolefix.co.uk will take you to the website where you can book it in. And you can organise a repair. If you want to support me in any way, then I do have a Patreon link in the video description. You can head over to Patreon to support me that way. Or you can head over to Twitter and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account to Twitch and then subscribing to my Twitch account for free every single month. Uh, I wonder what was going on then. It's just loading up the start screen. <laughs> but anyway, you can subscribe to Twitch every month for free and that does massively help out the channel. And also you can become a channel member by clicking on the join button just below this video, conveniently located right next to the subscribe button, which I absolutely think you should press. So that's going to be for this video. Really happy I got this one working. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now. I'm going to play some games.